This week in our permaculture design certificate course, we studied the soil. And it was clear to me that Jeff Lawton is passionate about soil. Just listen to one of his opening lines. He said that there is no larger, complex, or diverse life system that we know of in the universe. And that's a pretty powerful statement when we realize that the soil is what we depend on to provide nutrient to our crops to provide life to ourselves. We learned a lot about soil this week. We talked about some of the basic things that we need to understand about soil and that many gardeners are perfectly comfortable with. Things like testing the pH of soil. But we didn't just learn about why we should test the pH of soil. We learned about the importance of pH and how it affects the elements and nutrients that are available to the plants. We learned some analogies to help us remember that importance and just how pH is not a single number on a scale, but how it's actually a logarithmic expression and just how much change is actually taking place when the scale of our pH goes from a simple six and a half to a five and a half. We also spoke about another test that is common to many people, to test for nitrogen, phosphate, and potassium, or NPK, and how we can grow plants with just those three main nutrients, but how important it is to understand the other minor elements and trace elements that are in the soil and making sure that those are present and available to our plants as well, so that the plants can be more nutritious for our own nutrition. In studying this, we learned a lot about compost and how compost is a vital way for us to make sure that there is life in the soil. Jeff's clear favorite way of producing good and quick compost is the Berkeley 18-day method. And he taught that method to us and explained to us that as we progress in our understanding of that method and have more time and experience in producing compost, that we can make alterations and add interesting ingredients to the compost and be able to provide those nutrients to our plant. We learned that outside of just the ingredients that are necessary for producing compost, the only tools we really need to have are our own physical strength, a pitchfork, a hard-tined rake, and a compost thermometer. Now you can see behind me here this twin barrel tumbling compost system. This was something that we purchased when we first bought our land because we understood that we needed to have compost but we certainly didn't understand what all the benefits were. It was just an understanding that compost would make our plants grow healthier but not understanding the nuances behind what made good compost. Now my pitchfork has a few too many tines on it to make it easy for flipping compost over and my rake could be a little more robust but something is better than nothing and we definitely need to get more on track with producing compost for our garden and the rest of our site. We didn't just learn about compost itself though it has plenty of viable uses throughout our property we learned about how we can concentrate the elements and nutrition inside of compost by making biofertilizers and compost tea. He taught us how to make compost tea and the math behind just how much more nutrition we can get out of a liquid than we can out of the physical compost. He shared a story with us where he grew corn and was able to get five ears of corn per stalk now, I'm going on a limb because he didn't specify, but I think it's fair to say that Jeff Lawton was not using GMO corn. We're talking about heirloom varieties and good nutrition that makes the plant produce more. And I think that as we can apply these on our own garden and see the benefits, that we'll really understand just what's happening. We talked about some of the tools that are used to understand better the nutrition that our food actually provides us. We talked about the difference about providing quantity versus quality. It doesn't do us much good to be able to sit back and boast about a home garden that can produce 500 cucumbers on a very small amount of space if those cucumbers have no nutrition in them. 
it would be far better to produce just one cucumber that is full of nutrition than a whole bunch of empty food. One of the tools we learned about is a refractometer and how we can take a BRICS reading and why that relates to the nutrient density of the food. It's important to understand that while we can label ourselves under certain regulatory demands to be able to say that we're growing organically or in any other method, that those methods do not necessarily mean that we're providing more nutrition to our own bodies. It's good to say that we're organic, but it's the nutrition that matters. Pound for pound is not a good comparison. What we really need to be comparing is the nutritional value of each individual piece of food. We talked about some of the general misconceptions that seem to take place worldwide in the use of herbicides, pesticides, and fungicides. And that we might see a particular bug on a plant and think that we're going to use a pesticide just to deal with that one bug, but that the pesticides, in fact, get all throughout the plant and into the soil and affect soil life. How we can see a fungus on our grapes and decide to use a fungicide which in turn kills the beneficial fungus down in the soil. Or how we might decide that those weeds are just so invasive that we're going to use an herbicide and affect even more of the natural connections and beneficial connections in the soil and do more damage to ourselves than good. In the end, we end up putting in more money than the crop itself is a benefit to us. It's far better to design a system that can avoid using those inputs, save ourselves money, and provide a rich, fertile environment for the soil so that nature can do its job for our benefit. Soil is certainly something that you can make a lifelong study of, but where should we get started? We should get started right here understanding the concepts behind making good compost and by putting that compost in our own gardens and on our own properties and seeing the value ourselves. Certainly it's not something that takes too much effort. Even if down the line you feel like you know that there's going to be a substantial need for compost on your property, take the step to make one effort. Make one pile of compost. Apply that compost to your garden one time and see the difference that it makes. It's certainly something we're going to have to do here. And instead of knowing that it's going to be a benefit, we're actually going to have to put it in place so that we can see it be a benefit and share it with you. That's where you should start in building good soil fertility on your site. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time.